There's nothing more beautiful than saying God's house full. I can tell you that right now. Wow. Hallelujah. All right, so we're going to be um, in Ezekiel chapter 3. And we're going to start with verse 22. And uh, we'll, we'll go as far as the Holy Spirit leads us, but I know I've got quite a bit of Scripture to do in between that. And uh, in case you've not been here from when we started, when I started this, is God has sent Ezekiel to the house of Israel and the house of Judah, and their sin and their iniquities are worse than what they're doing at that time, worse than what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. Now, as you can imagine... Uh, a man from 500 to 700 B.C. is when this happened and he's being shown all these things from God. Now we're used to seeing ships take off and go to the moon and so forth and jets flying through the air. But we're talking about a man that the only thing he had ever seen was a cart being pulled by an ox. Uh, so the thing is he couldn't under, really understand it because it is really written for this end generation, the example that is set forth in this. So what do I got to ask you is, do you think God's happy with the world today? No. Do you think God's happy with our country today? No. As they continually, day by day, take our freedoms and our rights from us. Uh, you know, it's not supposed to be the government telling us what to do. We're supposed to be telling the government what we want. Yeah. And, that, and that is in God's Word, folks. Yes. They continue to pass laws that are against the commandments of uh, of God Amen. and the laws of God. Uh, and I'm going to tell you something. He is not happy at all. And you can't really blame Him. And I think to myself, my goodness, man, He has got to love us. I mean, to continue to for things to go like they're going, let me tell you why He hasn't just wiped the whole thing out. Because people like you are sitting in the house of God today Amen. worshiping God Amen. and giving Him His due, giving Him praise and glory. You know, a lot of people won't make the time or set the time aside to go and worship God today. As sad as that is. So here we are at Old Union Community Church, what I always say, right out in the middle of nowhere in the country, and look at this house. Amen. Because people are starving to death for the Word of God. Amen. Um, so anyway, so this is pretty much what this is about. Um, I am going to read verse 18 and 19 from uh, in that same chapter 3. Uh, to kind of set the stage here for what we're fixing to do. You know, it amazes me when I'm studying God's Word and I studied Ezekiel, I don't know, it's probably been 15 years or so ago, and I never until I started this started preaching on that that I realized what a fantastic book it is uh, and the example set forth in it. Uh, but the Holy Spirit never ceases to amaze me because I read it and I think, how in the world am I supposed to get a sermon out of that? You know, and the Holy Spirit corrects me and says, I'm fixing to show you if you'll shut up and listen. And sometimes we've got to sometimes we've got to shut up and listen. Um, and that's that's going to be in this lesson today. We have to shut up and listen. Um, so what I want to say is, first of all, at the end of uh, like I said, verse eighteen of chapter three, it says, "When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and Thou givest him not a warning, nor speakest to uh, warn the wicked from their wicked ways to save his life, the same wicked man shall die." in his iniquity, but his blood will I require of thy hand. That's right. yes. Do you understand that? Come on. That if you see somebody that's doing something wrong and you do not correct them, say, hey, look, you're going down the wrong path. You're going down a, wrong, you're going down a dark path and it's going, to, it's going to cost you your soul. And you don't warn them. What did God just say? That their blood shall be on your hands. Right. I mean that's that's a that's a big responsibility, isn't it? Yes, sir. Now it's not you judging. Did God say for you to go out there and judge? Well, what you doing? Wrong? I'd never do nothing like that. No, didn't say judge them. God is the judge, Amen. but we are to warn them out of love Amen. because of the love that Jesus Christ has for us. The love that He continues to show me and you every day by forgiving us of our sins. And with that same love, we should be out spreading God's Word, planting the seeds of God's Word, and warning the wicked that they're going to go to hell if they do not turn their life over to Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? Amen. That's right. It is our responsibility as Christians today. I don't understand how somebody can receive the free gift 
from Jesus. He died on the cross so that we could have forgiveness of sins, eternal life. How can you not share that with people that are lost in the world today? Uh, I was going to say it didn't cost anything, but it did, didn't it? Yes, it did. It did. It cost 30 pieces of silver. And Jesus Christ died on the cross and He was the only one perfect that ever walked this earth. And He died for us so that we could have forgiveness of sin. So, He has been sent to the house of Judah and the house of Israel to warn them of the things that would come. But they don't listen. The people listening today, they do not listen to the warnings. But... Alright, so let's see what God has to say. This is a little bit of a different topic, um, but it's the same thing about us getting out and shutting our mouths and listening to the Holy Spirit and listening to His leading and His guidance in our lives today. Alright, so Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 22, And the hand of the Lord uh, was upon me, and He said unto me, Arise, go forth in the plain, and I will talk to thee. Now it's kind of a little bit of a mistranslation there because really the plain here is valley, and there's mountains on both sides. And God has got His hand on him and He is taking him to a place where He will have His undivided attention. Does God have your undivided attention today? Did you come in this house to learn God's Word today, folks? Well, sometimes God will put us in a place where He can look at you face to face and tell you exactly what's on His mind. Alright? So He took him. Now the other thing I want to tell you is how important was this message for God to come His self to give Him these instructions? A very important message in this, isn't it? Uh, 1 Peter 3.12 says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and His ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Amen. Now if you've ever had a question, does God hear my prayers? He absolutely hears your prayers. Yes. Each and every one of them, He hears them. You know, Brother Randall said this morning, sometimes you'll say you'll pray about something and you don't hear nothing back from God. Sometimes an unanswered prayer is an answered prayer. Yes. Because He knows it's not going to be good for you. But God always hears our prayers, folks, because He loves us. So He took him to a place and put him in a position where He could talk to him and that He would listen. And God wants you to listen today. Anytime that you are in this Word, and any time you hear this Word being spoken, God wants you to listen. Alright? He left this here for us. Alright, verse 23. Then I arose and went forth in the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there as the glory which I saw by the river of Chebar, and I fell on my face. I mean, if you start back in chapter 1, it talks about the mode of transportation that God used what we would describe as a UFO. Now, could you imagine that? The whirling and the turtling and the bright lights and the rainbow upon Him and the Shekinah glory of God that shone through Him. This man was from 500 B.C. And he's seeing all this stuff and he falls on his face. Do you ever fall on your face in humbleness? in adoration for our Father. Amen. You know, sometimes we try to do things on our own. And then sometimes we let ourselves get in such a bad place yes. that we fall on our face. And then God's going to take you and He's going to put you somewhere where you will listen to what He's got to say in His, in His instructions. Amen. Uh, so I know, I know there's been many times in my life where I've started down the wrong path and I almost hit rock bottom. And finally had to fall on my face and say, Dear God, please forgive me. Help me out of this situation that I'm in today. Yes. The mess that I got myself into. Yes. Alright, verse 24. Then the Spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. I love that. Praise God. How many times have you fallen down and you couldn't get back up and you were feeling sorry for yourself and you were crying and you thought there was no light at the end of the tunnel? And the Holy Spirit of God puts you on your feet. And God will do that to you sometimes. He will say, get up! Quit feeling sorry for yourself and you get up! And He will get your attention and He will talk to you and He will console you and He will forgive you. And He will tell you what you need to do next, folks. Well, I, I don't understand why any Christian in the world would not hook to Jesus Christ's yoke. Come on, come on. He said, hook to my yoke. Yes. I will carry that burden for you. Mm. 
So he set him up on his feet. I can't help to think about Job. What did he do to Job? Job was sitting down in the, in the middle of ashes with sackcloth on. And what did God say? Get up, Job. That's right. Get up. Get up and act like a child of God. Yeah. Quit feeling sorry for yourself and turn your life over to Him today. Turn your problems over to Him today. Get up and act like a child of God is what He's saying. Mm. Amen, amen. So, the Spirit entered into him before he spoke to him. Why? Because he's going to provide, he's going to prepare your mind to receive what it is that he wants you to understand. Right. And what he, he's preparing your mind. Just like when we go out planting seeds in the world uh, of God's Word and we're trying to reach those that are lost out there today, well, I mean, you've got to get the rocks out of the dirt. You gotta till it, you gotta turn it, you gotta fertilize it. God does the watering and God gets the increase. Right. He's got to prepare the mind so uh, so that he would receive the message that he would have. Um, I can't I can't help but think about old Jonah, how obstinate he was. Uh, he didn't want to go to Nineveh and preach. He didn't want to save those people. So God had a well come up and swallow him to do his will. Next question I got for you is when he told him what to do. What would be the first instinct that we would do today? Why? When God is talking to you, and you know it's God talking to you, you just don't want to hear what He's got to say. And we say, why, God? Folks, our plan is not God's plan. Amen. <laughs> and He didn't ask why. He did what He was told. He fell on His face and humbled Himself before the God. And He did not ask why. The Holy Spirit filled Him. Do you feel the Holy Spirit today? Amen. He filled him and stood him upon his feet so he could talk to him. Alright? Verse 25. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee. He's going to bind him up. Okay? And shall bind thee with them among thou shalt not go out among them. So he told him uh, to go into... Am I make sure I'm on the right verse here? Yeah. Go into the house basically and shut your mouth. That's what he's telling them. Shut your mouth. You know, sometimes we want to keep talking and try to figure things out for ourselves instead of shutting our mouth. And listen to what the Holy Spirit's got to say. Listen to what God has to say to you. I uh, can't help this binding thing. Matthew 16, 19. Um, you know, when we first came to this church, I'm getting off a little subject here, but when we came to this church, we were looking for a place, and Miss Tina met us over here, and she handed me the keys. She says, here are the keys to the kingdom. And that verse is Matthew 16, 19. It says, Here are the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever uh, thou, thou free on earth, it shall be loosed. Alright? Uh, you, do you know that's a very powerful thing that we can use today? Amen. Is to pray for the binding of somebody? <coughs> somebody that's misleading God's children, you can pray to bind them? Now, he's been bound. And he's got him still. And he's got his attention. Alright? Um, I can't help but think because, you know, me and my wife minister a lot to a lot of people. And we pray. You know, some of them, their lives are in danger or, or something physically or whatever. You can bind them by prayer. Bind them. That's right. Prayer is so, so very important in our walks today. Uh, so he told him to go in his house and shut his mouth. And he bound him. Why? Because there is a right time and a wrong time to witness. Now, you know, we were talking about in verse 18, giving the warning. So now he's fixing, he's giving you an example here today how to witness to people. There's a right time and there is a wrong time. All right? God has not given him what to say yet. Now, I can most definitely relate to this because, and I know Brother Randall can too. You know, I mean, if I didn't study the Bible when I'm at home in my free time, he wouldn't have nothing to work with. Come on. I'm not, I don't get up here and just say what Jimmy wants to say. You didn't come here to listen to me. He gives me what to say through my diligently seeking His face through the Word of God. So He bound him up, told him to shut his mouth. He has his attention. He's not said a word because God hadn't told him what to say. So sometimes there is a right time and a wrong time to witness. You know, when you're, if you witness somebody at the wrong time or give them too much information, you can push them away. That's right. Instead of planting seeds with them. But see, the Holy Spirit will let you know when the time is right to witness to somebody. 
We've got to be listening just like He's got Him listening to Him right now. So, He's giving Him what to say. Um, now, I'm going to go on a deeper vein. I've kind of felt led to do this. I didn't tell you to go there. Ephesians 1.4, According as He has chosen them before the foundation of the world, before the foundation of the world, He chose some to bring forth the Word of God. But we've got to listen. And we've got to know when the time is right for us to be that witness. Okay? So I am going to, on a deeper thread on this one part, I'm going to go to Mark chapter 13. Uh, if you turn there, that's fine to hold your place because they're coming right back. Mark chapter 13, verse 9. Jesus Christ teaching. There's going to come a time when and God's election chosen before the foundation of the world to teach God's Word. You might say, what's that got to do with me? Well, if you know the truth of God's Word, then you are one of God's elect. You have eyes to see and ears to hear. But now, there's something that's got to be done in this Scripture right here, and we're going to have to wait for the Lord. Amen. We're so impatient. We are so impatient sometimes. Alright, so... This is, this is the time of the Antichrist. But take heed to yourself, for they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogue. What is a synagogue? It's a church. And ye shall be beaten. Folks, we're talking about peer pressure. We're talking about brow beating here. And ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake and a testimony against them. Now, do you understand what's going on? The Antichrist has already had or has his reign on this earth. He's coming here claiming to be Jesus Christ. And there is a time that He may call upon one of you to testify and give witness. Can I get an amen? amen. To be a witness for God. And it's going to be more important than ever for you to be listening to the Holy Spirit and His direction. And the Gospel must be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you, and deliver you up. Take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. Right. It says, But whosoever shall be given you in that hour that ye speak ye, for it is not you that speak, but the Holy Spirit. We have got to be still. We have got to focus and we have got to be listening to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Get out of the way. That's it. Get out of your own way. Let God do His work through you. All right, going back to the book of Ezekiel. Verse 26. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and thou shalt not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. I say it again. Our ways are not God's ways. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, God says, My ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So why in the world would you even question God and say, Why, God? Why do you want me to do that? It don't matter why. We've got to be obedient. We've got to be still. And we've got to listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, so Ezekiel will not be able to talk, but in God's time, in God's place, when the Spirit will enter into you, and then you will know exactly what to do and what to say. Amen. My question to you is this. Are you pliable? I said you've got to listen to God. You've got to have patience, and you've got to have faith. Are you pliable? What, what did He make Adam of from the dust of the earth, right? Yeah. Isaiah 64, 8 says, But now, O Lord, we are all the works of Thy hands. You are the potter and we are the clay. Yeah. Let God shape you and mold you and work on you so that you can deliver the message that He would have you to deliver. And a lot of people say to me, Brother Jimmy, you just don't understand. I've been arrested for this and that. I used to be on crack and I used to be on cocaine. I'm a bad person. I broke into somebody's house. God doesn't care about that. Amen. Are you pliable? Do you think that He can use you? I guarantee you, I never ever thought that I would be a minister of a church. I was in trouble. I was doing drugs. I was shoplifting. What all did Paul do? Come on now. He persecuted the church 
He drove women out by the head of the hair and beat them. He held the coats uh, of those that stoned Stephen. And what did God do to him? He struck him down. And he ended up writing most of the New Testament. 2 Timothy 5.17 For if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Yes. God can use you. Yes. Don't let somebody else hold you in bondage. Uh -huh. Don't let Satan hold you in bondage for your past mistakes and worry about serving the God of the universe and He can use you. Right. He can take your pain and He can use it for His gain. Come on. Come on. Don't accept by the new, brother. I mean, let's just say I've never done nothing wrong in my life. I've never said a cuss word. I've never smoked no dope. I've never stole. I've never, I mean, none of that. Now, how effective would I be as a minister today if I've never gone through anything in life? I mean, I can't see it, you know, because I have done so many things that I can get down on each and every person's level and minister unto them. Now, am I, am, I, am I sorry to have regrets for the things I've done? Absolutely. But I'm not going to keep looking back. No. I'm going to look forward That's right. to eternal life Amen. in the kingdom of God. Amen. God can use you. But you have to be still. You have to humble yourself before Him. You have to seek His face. You have to be in prayer. And you have to listen for the leading of the Holy Spirit of God. And He can use you if you will do that. Amen. Isaiah 40, 31, But those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. They shall run and be not weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Because God is your strength today. Each and every time I think I can't go no further and I'm tired and I'm working doing this, but yet the Holy Spirit always gives that strength to continue to push forward. Why? Because we've got so many people lost in the world today that we can't stop. We have got to continue to do the work of God. <clears throat> so when someone is asking you something and they're not ready for it, we're talking about planting seeds here again now because that's what this message is about. Being still, listening to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now let me, let me give you an example about this. Now some of y'all have not done some of the studies that I've done in Bible study. Uh, one of the one the deepest mysteries of all is the one that's in the Garden of Eden. You know, somebody comes up to me and says something. Well, what? You know, I heard about. You know, we did this and that. And there. What do you think about that? And I know they're not ready. The Holy Spirit says, "No, don't tell them that. They're gonna think you're religious enough." So instead, I plant a seed. I say, "You know what? Isn't it kind of funny? I mean, you know, as a kid, I remember doing it in the coloring book, and they had Eve sitting under a tree, and that big old pretty ripe apple in her hand." And that snake hanging down from the tree having a conversation with her, you know? And I said, and I'll, I'll make this statement. I said, uh, did you know that, that one of Satan's many names is the serpent? We were talking about a snake in the garden. Uh, the serpent was in the garden, which was Satan. And then you just keep on walking. Now what are they going to do? You plant the seed. God will do the tilling. He'll do the fertilizing. And He'll do the watering. If they are, no, if they are supposed to know that truth, now the first thing they're going to do is they're going to run home and get in their Bible. And that's the whole point, isn't it? That's right, that's right. And they're going to look for it. They're going to search and they're going to read. They're going to study. Then they're going to be more interested. They're going to be more hungry and they're going to come back to you and say, hey, you know what? You're right. I found that in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. His name was the serpent. That's how you plant seeds. You cannot beat somebody over the head with your Bible to make them believe a secret or a mystery that you know. God knows when they're ready. Shut your mouth. Be still. Be in tune with the Holy Spirit and He will do the leading and the directing and tell you when to plant a seed and when not to. When to give them more information and when not to. <clears throat> Man, I tell you what, being in tune with the Holy Spirit is so beautiful. Then you might say, Brother Jimmy, how do I do that? Well, let me tell you. I'll be glad to tell you how to do that. You be in this Word every day. Start your day off in the mornings and read this Bible. Amen. Well, brother, you don't understand. I just don't understand. Nope. Mm -hmm. Read your Bible. Pray to God before you read your Bible and He will give you what you are ready for, for where you are in His walk with Him. Right. You want to be in tune with the Holy Spirit, right? Read your Bible every day. 
Be in prayer every day. Get as much of God in your life as you can every day. And if that's simply me driving down the road and memorizing verses off the index cards, that's how I stay close to God. I keep my mind right. You can go down the road every day and listen to Christian music, can't you? Or you can listen to some rap crap about killing and sex and drugs and alcohol. Or you can listen to God's Word. You've got to keep your mind on the Lord. And when you spend time with Him every day like that, you are going to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. You say, what was that, Father? <laughs> He's there. He's with you. He's guiding you. He's leading you when you will let Him. <clears throat> so don't let the tail of the serpent whip you to death. I mean, He wants you to ruin it. He wants you to put too much on somebody. He wants you to push them away. He don't want them to come to church. He don't want them to know anything about the Bible. Do it God's way. Shut up and listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit of God. Yes. Verse 27. I'll probably wrap it up with this verse right here. Now listen. But when I speak with thee, this is God speaking, I will open thy mouth and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. Did he say, Thus saith Ezekiel? Right. Thus saith the Lord God. That is what's supposed to be taught in God's house is the Word of God. Yes. Not my words. Not Randall's words. Not Amelia's words. Amen. Amen. God's Word. See, because the thing is, I mean, I could not know anything at all about this Bible and I'd be ahead of most ministers in the world today if I just stood up here and read this to you. You know why? Because when you bring the words of life, when you bring this Bible to life and read those words, the Holy Spirit will do the teaching. Amen. The Holy Spirit will do the teaching and the convicting, folks. That's right. <clears throat> so it says, But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, he that heareth, let him hear. And he that forbeareth, let him forbear. For they are a rebellious house. You cannot hammer the truth into them, folks. It does not work trying to cram religion down somebody's throat. <coughs> of course, I don't believe in religion anyway. I believe in Christianity. Because Christianity is a reality. Uh, religion, unfortunately, is full of uh, false doctrines and traditions of men yes. that don't teach God's Word right. and holds God's children in bondage oh. over their own words. Right. And God's Word is designed to set you free. Amen. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32 says, For if those Jews uh, continue in My Word, then they shall be disciples indeed, for you shall know the truth, and you shall be made free. Amen. That's what God can do for you today. He can free you from that bondage. Now, if they won't listen, is what he's saying now. You planting that seed, you're out there witnessing, and they won't listen. You, I hear people all the time online saying, well, I, I, I try to do this and that, and they get their feelings hurt. Don't let it hurt your feelings. Be like a duck and let the water roll right off your back, folks. Yeah. You plant your seed. Don't think that you're not making a difference because you are. Um, and some people don't know this verse. It's Romans 11.8. You know, when you get upset because you're trying to teach somebody something or you're trying to hammer something in their head and they just don't get it, they don't want to know it, walk on. Romans 11 eight, according as it is written, For I have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. Some of them are blinded by God on purpose. So don't get upset. Don't get your little feelings hurt. Just move on. Plant your seed and move on. And God, if it is meant to grow, He will see that that seed grows. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Everyone, please. Bow.